you look at me, and you look at me, and however you want. the power switch to the on position. The elemental essential necessary spirit of rock and roll. You're talking with Drew Mitchell. Drew, you've been a, a DJ for Power FM for how long? Uh, about two and a half years. Okay, during your two and a half years uh, with Power FM, have you seen Christian Rock change? Definitely. Um, it's uh, The labels have uh, become a lot smarter to what's going on with the industry. People are starting to realize that uh, you know there is a market for Christian music and there's a lot of us out there and we want to hear it and that's what we like. It had an influence on me. I mean it played a role in how I, I came to Christ and um, I can't tell you how many phone calls and emails I get on a daily basis and people just just totally grateful. And I think it's because God works best through those who serve Him. So when the music is about God and it's clear, it's a clear message, or he puts a CD of Pillar in somebody's hands like me who's, who is teetering on whether or not to get saved, you know? And I'm looking at the CD cover and I'm like, that's pretty cool. You know, the graphics and everything. I was like, yeah, it's not bad. And I put it on, I was like, the music's good. And Wait, what are they singing about? They're singing about God like that? I was like, wow. How did you get to know Christ? Friend of a friend, I was like, you know, I was like, well, I just want to go somewhere where people are normal and, and, you know, they're my age and they do normal things. Just from being around those people and I started, you know, it's like, I'm going to come here four times and if I hear stuff I need to hear, I'll keep coming. And, you know, God just softened my heart and I became a Christian maybe about two or three months after that. So I lived in Los Angeles for a long time and I've been in secular radio since the day I walked out of college, you know. So um, I know a lot about the secular industry and that's why I think God called me over here is to help especially with Power FM with my knowledge of the way that stuff works you know and uh, to come over here and be like you know hey I know how it works over there so do you still listen to any of the secular market I do um, but I'm a lot more careful with the way I do it um, I still have a lot of ties and a lot of friends in that world a friend of mine in the industry was like, hey, I know you used to listen to this kind of music. You used to like, you know, like going to heavy shows. I've got free tickets. Do you want to go? And uh, I was like, yeah, dude, of course. You know, I was there for the first band, and then we walked out and was standing in the foyer area, and this guy walks over to me and he goes, you're Drew Mitchell, and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, he's like, do you remember me? And I had no idea who this guy was, and uh, it turns out that. Um, when I was in college, I worked at a treatment center for a little while. Um, he was in one of my groups, and I had totally forgotten about this guy. I haven't seen him in eight years or something like that, you know. And uh, he's like, yeah, I've heard you on the radio, man. I tried and called try and call once, but I couldn't get through on the lines, and I gave him one of my cards, and I'm like, how you doing? Are you sober? And he's like, well, I'm not doing drugs anymore, but, I'm, you know, I still drink. And, and uh, when... He kind of walks off, his girlfriend um, turns around to me really quickly and goes, he's so embarrassed to talk to you because he's not clean anymore. And now because you're a Christian, you know? And I was like, well, don't, don't be, you know, here's my card, email me. And right then and there, I knew why I was supposed to go to that show. There's a band here in town, they're called um, Rustic. And uh, they just, uh, you know, they, they are on fire for God, they are on fire with where they play shows, the songs that they write, you know, because, I mean, you have to go see them live to hear this, and it'll just beat you down, you know, and uh, those guys have just amazing hearts, so. Uh. All right, here we are, we're with Jeremy, and Jeremy, you're the lead singer of the band Rustic, right? Uh, yeah. How long have you guys been together? We have been together for about a year. Um, we've actually only been turning around for about four months now. So, God's been good though, man. He's opened a lot of doors for us. We played with a lot of bands. We played with bands like uh, the secular market. We played with bands like Godsmack and Breaking Benjamin and a lot of really cool opportunities to minister to bands who really don't step into church or whatever. So, good stuff, man. And, you know, of course, Disciple and Flyleaf, you know, it's incredible. Okay. 
oh, we have such a heart for the young people, the young generation. Me, me personally, um, you know, I've come from the background of some of these kids, and and my heart. And, and our heart as a band is to reach out to kids who wouldn't normally step in church. Um, I know I come from a background of, of drugs and alcohol and abuse and, and all that stuff. And, and so I know what kind of love these kids are looking for. And a lot of times they, they don't understand and they're looking for love in, in all the wrong places. <laughs> so I grew up not really having a father and my mom was always kind of doped out or whatever. So naturally I just kind of went off that way. Uh, it's the only thing I'd ever known for about 12 years of my life. And then my grandfather's a minister and so he came and got us and I got thrown into church and it was called culture shock. I had absolutely no idea what I was what I was doing and, and how I was supposed to live and I had you know these people over here telling me that I'm I'm terrible and wrong and then I'm, my friends are over here going dude it's okay come be with, be with us. And so I was just you know kind of stuck in between two worlds and I didn't know really where to go. And uh, do you have a personal relationship with him now? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I'm, I'm actually a music director at my church. <laughs> Imagine that. So, uh, I, you know, I do that on Sundays and Wednesdays. And um, then, you know, music director by morning and rock star by night, I guess. Hey, you, uh, you use your music as your ministry right now. Do you think that this has an influence on kids? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, there's, there's so many times that in church, um, I, you know, like I said, I lead, I lead worship or whatever, and kids don't really, you know, they worship, but it's not like this. I got kids coming up to me sometimes, man, and they're like, that one song, um, we have a song that talks about suicide, and I remember one time in particular, we were playing a club, and it wasn't a church venue at all, but a, a guy came up to me, he's like, something's different, and that one song that uh, you sang is called Sincerely Yours, and it's talking about a, a note that someone wrote when it was too late, and they'd already done, uh, you know, committed suicide, and they wanted to express how much they were sorry and that they loved uh, the individuals that they left behind. And he was like, man, I'm, I'm just going through so much. And um, I was like, well, you know, let me help you. And, and you just, you get, to, you get to minister to kids in such a way because you're, you're on stage, man. They're looking at you and it's a responsibility, but it's something that, that God has, it's really humbled me as an individual. When people come up to me and, and they're just, just pouring their hearts out to me, man. It's humbling to know that that kind of responsibility is placed on your life. Where do you want this band to go? I want to see this band like any other band, man. I, I, want, to, I want to be huge. Honestly, that's, that's me. I want to minister to, to millions and millions of people. And I would, I, me personally, I want to see, I want to change the way Christian music is viewed. Okay, with that, how is Christian music viewed? Well, man, everybody I talk to, I mean, not everybody, but I don't want to get in trouble with anyone. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people that just think that Christian music is corny, man. I mean, you, so you think that it's labeled? I mean, once you become a Christian, it's your label is you're no fun, you can't do anything, you don't rock, you you have no soul. Is that? I mean, that, honestly, is it really? Yeah, absolutely. The the way that people insinuate is that you're going to get on stage and you're just going to preach at them all day and you're going to beat them over the head with the word and. And you know you're gonna sing cheesy songs that that they, they don't understand. You know we we like to sing songs that relate to people's lives. I mean Christians go through you know broken hearts and Christians go through abusive households. You know Christians are just like everybody else, except we're redeemed and we found the truth. And you know that we have that answer, and that's the only difference between us and what everybody else is doing. Okay, we're here with the with the singer, the lead singer, right, of uh, the band Disciple, and uh, we're here in the underground. And we're here in Denison, Texas. What brought you here to this uh, venue? <laughs> they asked us to come and play, so uh, we're here with Flyleaf and Rustic tonight, and uh, we put on a put on a show. Have a, what was your Christian background? I mean, have you grown up Christian, strong Christian background? Yeah, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my parents took me to church, you know, every Sunday. I grew up in East Tennessee, so it's very similar, uh, I would say. Uh, like you know, Bible Belt culture as Texas is. Were you influenced by rock and roll? I was influenced by rock and roll. What bands influenced you? Well, you know, I was very fortunate enough, uh, being a 12-year-old, to have a cool youth pastor who introduced me to some of the Christian rock bands that were popular at that time. You know, being like 1988 or 1989, the bands that were popular at that time were Striper and Petra and White Cross. And uh, so I was very fortunate to have a youth pastor introduce me to uh, some of this Christian music that was an alternative to um, 
heavy metal of that particular time period, and um, it had a huge impact on my life, and uh, I, w I would say was life-changing and honestly why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Um, do you feel that the music that you present can influence people? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we see people give their lives to Christ, you know, every concert, but uh, of course that's not really what really seals my, my faith in what we do. It's seeing people who come back to us two or three or four or five years later and you know, and say thank you, or you know, I, I received Christ at your concert four years ago, and and God's really changed my life. And what message are you trying to teach in the, in your words, your lyrics? You know, we're just trying to give people a message of hope uh, through Jesus that he, you know, he really did, he really did come to the earth because of his passion, and his love for us, and uh, so that we can have forgiveness uh, through his blood from our sins. What are you trying to project them to? Do you have a vision of the band of what you want them to be? Yeah, you know, my answer to that is probably a little generic. You know, I really just want to do this as long as God wants us to. And um, as long as we are being effective in what we're doing. Um, and right now is the, has been the best time of our career. We just signed a, a new record deal with um, SRE Records and, and Sony Epic Records. And so, you know, we have a lot of opportunities before us. And, um, you know, seeing more fruit, so to speak, than we ever have. And, and so, honestly, it feels like we're just starting. I know it said we're 12 and a half years into it, but it really feels like we're just starting over. And so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I grew up listening to Boston and Foreigner and Fog Hat and uh, ACDC and all these other things. It's part of our culture, this whole rock atmosphere. What do you say to the hardline skeptics that say this is not any type of Christian? This is this does not even relate to Christ. It's just hard rock music. I have parents that have well, came and given me these CDs to listen to about why rock music is evil and you know how scientists have done the studies and if you play this kind of music when you're pregnant uh, it's not good but if you play symphony music for the baby you know that it helps them and it develops their mind and stuff and I'm like you know what I don't argue with that. I think that's great. Symphony music I think is wonderful and great. They know in moderation in moderation that things are good. In fact, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from where it comes from above. So, you know, I think it's okay to have some chocolate cake. I like Three Musketeers and Snickers, you know, and of course, um, I eat my broccoli and, you know, the things you need to put in the body, but we don't by any means say, oh, throw it out, you know, let's throw the baby out with the bath water. They're still kids, they're still teenagers, and so to me, I tell them, you know what, everything's okay in moderation, it's a gift from God. Um, to me, the best purpose for music is worship, a worship service. But when I'm going to go play in my men's softball game, you know, I'm not ready to sing how great thou art. I'm ready for some skillet. I'm ready for some disciples, something to get me pumped up. What determines, uh, like these bands that are you play on your radio station, what determines what makes them a Christian band? I mean, do the lyrics make them Christian, or do they declare that they're Christian? And do you guys screen that before you put them on air? You know, we do. We are very different from some stations because we are always, at Power FM, a ministry first, a radio station second. It's always been that way. I want to, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that put your time, your talent, and your treasure into this project. God's going to bless that. He's going to bless it richly. Speaking with uh, Tony Brown, and he's a uh, president of N1 Accord and uh, founder of the Underground yes. Concert. Is it is it Underground Concert Org or what is it? Well, the website is actually www.undergroundconcerts.org. Back in the mid '90s, God kind of gave me a, gave me a vision. I'm not a big, you know, there's, there's just a huge vision, but kind of put an idea in my head about starting a club that was geared towards teenagers, that was a safe alternative to what I saw that was being offered on the streets as it was. But I, I, I ran from that, and, and I made up excuses. I was kind of like Moses, you know, here my God, send Aaron. You know, I kept making up excuses for not being able to do that. Didn't know how to promote a concert. Didn't know anything about running a club. Just had a desire. Uh, loved music. Loved being around music. Loved kids. And just wanted, through my past experience, knowing that in this area there was really nothing to do that didn't lead to some kind of trouble. I wanted to provide something different. Where do you see this club? What's your vision for this club in the future? Well, I'm looking at this as this particular environment that we're in tonight is a very unique environment. And in fact, I don't think there's another place like this in the country where you've got a for-profit company that's merging with a non-profit ministry in order to impact the culture 
um, and provide this for the community. It's all about reaching out into the community. There's no particular church name. There's no particular church denomination that's tagged on this. We are a standalone ministry, and that's by design. Um, so this is a unique blend here, and this, this is an experiment. This is a prototype, if you will. My vision for the underground is to see an underground network. Uh, I would love to, I love to network with people from around the country because we're passionate about it. Uh, we want to impact our culture and we want to see these kids have a place that's safe where they can come in and they may not go to church. There's a lot of people that, that don't feel comfortable going to a church, but they'll come to something like this. And through that we have the opportunity for them to hear the truth about who Christ is, what He's done, and how they can have a relationship with Him. It's right. How do you earn your living? I'm a firefighter, professional firefighter, paramedic. I work for the city of Plano in Texas, and that's that's my real job. That's what pays the bills. The rest of this is just pure passion. What do you say to people that uh, that are like hardline Christian people that don't believe that this is, that this is a ministry? Yeah. What do you say to them? Well, I usually don't have conversations with them. Uh, <laughs> Just to be honest with you, you know, I, I bless them in their ministry as they go and do what God's called them to do, and, and I'm not going to judge them uh, because I don't want to be judged. And so I let them do what God's called them to do. I do what God's called me to do, and nothing they say is going to change that. Like nothing I say to them is going to change what they feel like God's called them to do. At some point, as an individual, you have to make the decision for yourself of what you're going to do with Christ because you have to do something with Him. You can't just ignore him. So you have to come to that decision of what am I going to do with Christ? And, and is what I've been taught the truth? And you begin to seek out that truth. And, and uh, you know, Christ has a way of, of, as you seek him, he shows you things and he, he takes you along a journey. Some of these kids that are on the stage grew up in church like I did. Others didn't. And you get, to, you get a, a, a real mixing pot of different stories from different people that don't look like typical church going guys. I mean, they've got earrings, they've got tattoos, they've got long hair, whatever. Um, but their hearts, man, their hearts are like gold. And, and they, they're, they're so passionate about sharing their story of what Christ has meant to them and done with them in their life and what they did with Christ and, and what's happened as a result. And so, you know, sometimes there's opportunities for kids to come forward. Sometimes you just kind of plant those seeds and let the Spirit do what he's going to do. I would love to see an underground everywhere there's a hard rock cafe, eventually. The band Sherwood, it's not necessarily a Christian band, but you guys are Christian players. I mean, all of you are Christians. Well, we would all call ourselves Christians. Um, a lot of Christians probably wouldn't call us Christians. Uh, Why would you say that? Well, like, we, I mean, we're not, uh, like, most of us are not evangelical Protestant Christians, which a lot of people is the only definition, especially in modern Christian music, for a Christian. For instance, Catholics aren't Christians, Eastern Orthodox aren't Christians. Uh, like, two out of five of us are universalists. Like, we don't really believe in hell. You know, like stuff like that. A lot of people will get. A lot of times, will get you counted not a Christian by other people. Um, but we would consider ourselves Christians insofar as like Jesus is the most important thing in our life and His example, et cetera, et cetera. So, I was raised at an evangelical Protestant, and so at a very early age, I professed Christ my Savior. Um, and all through high school and most of college, I did three years of college and then dropped out to the band. Um, and right now, I, I don't. I don't reject that. Uh, belief. Um, I just am, I'm just in a vague spot. I was a philosophy major in college and uh, read a lot of theology and a lot of philosophy and um, just, you know, I have, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be dogmatic right now in my life. I want to be willing to talk with everybody. Um, 
and I'm trying to understand uh, what Jesus came here to say and do. Do you believe that there's a heaven and a hell? Uh, I, uh, sometimes I really want to be a universalist, which is everybody saved and goes to heaven. Um, I don't think my idea of heaven is necessarily the same like this, like this place where there's gold and stuff. I think that maybe a lot of that language in the Bible is figurative. I don't believe that finite sin in someone's life is punished uh, with infinite punishment, meaning like I sin, you know, X amount, uh, and as a result of that, I, I am suffer for eternity. And as Jesus Christ is your Savior, what did he come to do? Oh, I'm not sure. If nothing else, Jesus came to show us that uh, people are infinitely valuable no matter what class they're in. Um, and oftentimes, the people that we think are the righteous people, like the Pharisees, for instance, are not in fact necessarily the righteous people. Now, Jesus may have also come to die for my sins. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to accept that. I understand there's a lot of theology that that, that is the centerpiece of. Um, and that may be the case. And if so, I certainly do not reject that sacrifice, and I certainly embrace it. I'm just not sure right now if that's, if that's what it was all about. I think that the question, what's going to happen to you when you die, is one that's rooted in a, an evangelicalism of fear as opposed to an evangelicalism of love. Um, and I don't think that anything we're supposed to believe, we're supposed to believe because we're afraid of something. I sure hope that I am going to go to heaven. And... Uh, but I don't, I'm not going to like make any decisions in my life based on like the prospect of eternal hellfire. I think that, that that's, that's like pretty much the most selfish way that I could ever do anything for Christ is like to avoid burning. What do you say to the people, the skeptics of this, uh, this rock genre right here going, it's Christian rock, what do you say to them? For the people who were, you know, very conservative Christians who would think rock and roll was not the right way to approach people, I would say, you know, it, it's culturally relevant, just like Jesus was culturally relevant. And if, you, if you're going to go back to traditionalism, you know, go all the way back to his time and let's all wear long robes and sandals, you know, so.